<laughs> so what's going on, man? Trent Babb in the house, everybody. Uh, it is the Eggs, Bacon, and Joey Morning Show. We are live, so I want all of our listeners to know that we are here live. Uh, it is, uh, we're, we're, we're recovering from the three-day weekend. What'd you do this weekend, man? I got a good show. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really breaking up right now. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee hasn't settled in yet. I do have a lifestyle of a comedian. I was up at 2 a.m. But uh, this weekend, I got a gig here in Hanford. We are finally bringing back the comedy scene to Hanford at uh, Cape Pasa by the mall. I've always wanted a mall gig. I love being a comedian, just performing in the weirdest places. And now I can say, I performed at a mall. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, before we get there, because what you what you just said right now is that you you got a gig yes. at Cape Pasta the Hanford Mall, which means you were on a journey to kind of figure out how to bring comedy back to the city of Hanford, how to bring comedy back here to Central California. Yes. You're on this journey to bring more comedy shows here, and the one of the places that accepted you was Cape Pasta. Cape Pasta, y- yeah, you know. I've been a traveling comedian for three years with my wife all around California and Hawaii, and we came back to uh, the Central Valley to start a family. (laughs) And, you know, I was going around, and there's no comedy. We brought it back. We want to bring entertainment to Hanford. Get people out of their house, give Netflix a break, and experience a live entertainment setting. And what's great about K Pasa and other venues that accepted us, they're all Mexican restaurants. Mexican restaurants know how to party here. They're like, bring it. Yeah, we got it. We'll get the quesadillas out. We'll have a good time. And all the other bars are like, yeah, we just like doing karaoke. But So I just love the Hispanic culture here. It, it, I was brought up here, and I love it. And it just reminded me how, of how great a people uh, the Hispanic culture are. So nothing like food, drinks, and comedy. Yes. And don't drink too much and eat too much and then laugh too hard <laughs> that is not a good combination so tell me uh what what did you work out with Kepasa this weekend Kepasa, uh anthony the owner there okay. he was so welcoming right when we walked in because they used to have comedy there and he was just like yeah sit down let's talk about it and we worked out a date march 1st which is payday <laughs> Yes, we're going to have first a, of the month. Yes, first of the month. It's a Thursday. It's starting at nine o'clock and it's going until 11 o'clock. And what's so good about this uh, is we are starting the show out as a feature headliner show with professional comedians. And then we're going into an open mic. Most people, oh. when they watch comedy, they go, I can do that. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Prove it. (laughs) Get up here, tell a funny story. But, you know, this area, especially in Fresno, Tulare, and Bakersfield, there are so many hungry comedians for stage time, and they make that drive. They're not getting paid, but they get up, and they want to perform for uh, the audiences that have never seen them before. They're honing their acts. That's what comedy is all about, is taking your best stuff, testing it out in a new area, and realizing that's not my best stuff. <laughs> so March 1st. March 1st. K Pasa at the Hanford Mall. We're going to get comedy back right here in Hanford. Yes. And uh, is, is a comedy show called anything? It is the Cartel Comedy Show. K Pasa. I was thinking like... <laughs> K Pasa Cartel it made me think of like uh, you know the drug lords in in, in Cuba. We like, just had the DA here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you, you get a knock knock. <laughs> K Pasa Cartel. Boom. <laughs> you know, you're out. <laughs> but this is this is a better time. I, I assure you. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm excited for it. March first. And uh, first off, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you got a little bit into it that you and your family kind of moved back here yes. to raise your family, and you've been traveling everywhere with you and your wife. Uh, what got you into comedy? I was a musician ah. for the longest time, a serious singer-songwriter, and I got fed up with the business. It's it, There's a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors. It's a lot of cheating. You, when you look at uh, musicians on stage, you'll always see a laptop up there. Like, why is there a laptop with this live band? And then there's auto-tune, so you don't even need to be a real singer. <laughs> and today's lyrics are really just straightforward, like, girl, I love your <laughs> hair. It's like... You know, I like the 90s abstract lyrics, but so I got into comedy because I'm a performer and man, you get addicted to the laughter. You really do. People, th- when they respond to something, that instant gratification with music, you have to wait two and a half minutes until the song's over to hear a clap. With comedy, it could be a short 10 second one liner and you get that instant gratification and oh, it's a drug. The adrenaline just pumps right into your <laughs> veins and I love it. Now, when you were in Hawaii, uh, were you doing comedy shows out there as well? Oh, yes. Wow, how was that? 
comedy in Hawaii, man. Um, well, first off, uh, 45 minutes, you've already done a circle around the island of Oahu. So you get a little cabin fever. But, uh, man, Hawaii is crazy. Oh. It, it's just like any other tour spots. It, around the ocean, by the sea, it is so nice but once you get a little inland you're like oh this is a very poverty uh <laughs> bad place to be but uh hawaii was great they, they welcomed me with open arms and um a large homeless problem so they want to they want to hear about the homeless people a lot and, and, and they, they want to <laughs> laugh just like anybody else oh exactly yeah what, what what is your uh what would you say your comedy is based on you know a lot of people talk about oh my comedy is based on my family my comedy is based on my kids my comedy is based on jobs or what, what what's your comedy based on if you were to kind of nab it down for people to none of those things that you just mentioned <laughs> <laughs> now you know uh, I pride myself of being a clean comedian okay you know a lot there's a lot of raunchy comedy out there and you're, you're a little limited when you say you're a clean comic but I like to walk that line uh, but it, it's mostly about my life and uh, you know being a, a white heterosexual male uh, I, I don't have that many struggles in life so I really have to work on topics that people are like okay i want to listen to this guy talk about you know uh opening up his own business which is you know i just opened up a place it's it's a thrift store cigar shop ah. and i called it secondhand smoke <laughs> you know it's i really think it's going to be a hit or a real drag i don't know so we're going to work on that and it, it's just me talking about uh married life and the problem with my marriage is i'm, I'm happy <laughs> so i have to I, I really have to dig deep to so find things. actually no problem. <laughs> then again, we are coming up on our second year anniversary, ah. so um, the problems will arise. Right? The honeymoon Joey? could be over. It is. It is. <laughs> it's starting to go. But, you know, uh, and all my viewpoints about music that we've mm. already spoken about, I, I talk about that stuff. Do you get into political things? No. You stay away from that. But you know what? I make up for it. I talk about religion. Ah. <laughs> religion is a big no-no. But, you know, you got to talk about what you know about. And uh, I I'm a Christian, and I, I tell people, please don't judge me. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> it's just walking that line of, is it nice? Is it mean? Is he making fun of it? It's my life. Well, especially, and this is my question for you just as a curiosity uh, for a comedian, is that, you know, uh, when you walk into a room, even just amongst family now, yes. you know, you're having dinner together, you can't even talk politics anymore. You can't even, I mean, everybody's so delicate. You oh, say one yeah. thing about the president or you say one thing, uh, you know, for the president, it's like... What? The, the, you know, the, the, the family collapses. There's people unfriending each other on yes. Facebook. Oh, man. I mean, so as a comic, how do you pick and choose, you know, what you're going to talk about without somebody getting offended? And has that ever happened to you? Um, I avoid talking about politics on stage because I've seen what happens to those that do. Drinks oh, no. are thrown at them. I've saw I've seen empty beer bottles thrown at people before. Oh my god! It's like, oh, okay, I'm scratching my notepad. <laughs> no Trump jokes tonight. Oh no! But it, it is uh, the family dynamic. Uh, I, I guess I'm liberal. I, I don't know. I, I don't care so you don't much. Really, yeah. But my family are hard right wing conservatives. Ah. Fox News. They fall asleep to it. Oh, it is so it, it, that can't be healthy. Yeah, no. So we, I just don't talk about it at all. Not even with family. No, because I want them to stay my family. <laughs> I, I don't want it to be awkward when I ask for money, Joey. <laughs> how how big is social media for you as a comedian? You know, I use it as a promotion tool. Okay, really, and uh, but you can't deny that it is such a huge part of people's everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, along the politics. Um, there are so many uh, politic jokes, political jokes. You know, there's every late night show. There's Bill Maher. There's John Oliver. It feels like they're all written. And that's the same I feel for Facebook. It, it is such a huge part for people's lives. Everybody jokes about it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm trying to dig a little deeper. Let's talk about the mundane <laughs> instead of the things that are just so obvious. But Facebook is the best promotion tool out there. Oh, I absolutely. I mean, especially, like I said, social media. Everybody's picking up their phone as soon as they wake up. 
That's I mean, as soon thing. as they wake up, they're looking at their social media, and, and, and people are putting their grievances out there. You know, grievances with their uh, spouse, with their uh, issues at work, whatever might be the case. I mean, they're putting it out there on social media. What's the worst thing you've ever seen on Facebook? Oh, I got mine. Man. I, I, I can, I can I've jump in. I've seen some pretty bad stuff. I've oh. seen some breakups happen on Facebook. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like literally happen on Facebook. Uh, but, I mean, uh, you know, for you, I mean, are you constantly looking at, let's just say, like television and things that are happening in pop culture uh, to provide any material towards uh, your uh, presentation? I, I do. But you know that that's just just uh, topical humor. Ah. It, it's here one week and then gone the next. You know, uh, John McCain. Who's that? <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> ah, he was a very important person <laughs> just a while ago. Okay, scratch that off the notepad. <laughs> Nobody likes those. But uh, I don't get into TV shows mm. because. TV's almost become political in the sense like, watch my show. Mm. It's the best show. <laughs> You're not going to regret this. <laughs> like, hey, calm down, man. <laughs> I got a life. Uh, no, like I was watching uh, the Super Bowl, right? I mean, everybody oh, watches the Super Bowl. That was such a but, good game. But before the Super Bowl ended, it was like uh, they did the commercial for This Is Us. You know, that's like the big show right now. And it was like, uh, you have to watch the first 15 minutes. You know, and like to me, I'm like, what? You know, like. I, I have to, why? You know, because I've never yeah. watched the show and everybody <laughs> talks about it. So I, I, I did it. You I watched actually it. watched the first 15 minutes because they, they got me. You, you thought the dad died in the fire? Yeah. <laughs> he got the dog. He's a good guy. <laughs> oh, that, that was the Super Bowl followed by This Is Us proves to me that the country is bipolar. <laughs> I mean, it was a lot of emotions. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was, my adrenaline was going, yeah, touchdown. And then like, oh, no. The well, dog's barking in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is we were with family members who are hardcore This Is Us followers. Oh. So when they were at our house, they're like, hey, you know, we can't leave because if we leave, we're going to miss the first 15 minutes. <laughs> so is it okay if you guys let us watch it on your TV? And I was like, well, I guess, sure. You know, I'll check it out. I was so depressed. Yeah. Is that what America's going, uh, watching right now and getting depressed? And uh, I mean, I was literally like, why am I watching this? The dad just died. And I mean, not to do a spoiler alert or anything, but why am I watching this on TV? That's how I felt. <laughs> you just felt the emotion of everybody in the room and you got sucked up into it like a vacuum. Yeah, but is that what's happening to America? We're all watching these depressing shows? We just want extremes of emotion. You know, there's no in between. I think that's where we're, where we're at in our culture. My like, goodness. Hey, man, you either want to punch me or you want to hug me. <laughs> what do you want to do? There's no middle. Come on. <laughs> what, oh, you want to punch? <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's do this. Yeah, man. That, that, uh, I don't think that, that ever happened any other year of the Super Bowl where it was followed with such yeah. a estrogen-driven show. <laughs> I mean, I'm crying, and I'm like, I wasn't even crying during the Super Bowl, and that was such a great game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was crying. I cry with just the acoustic guitar. Like, they're all, next, this is us. Boom, 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 boom. It's like, oh, God. I'm so into this. Oh, man. Trent Babb, it's fun having you here, man. So once again, March 1st. Payday Thursday. Payday and that, Thursday. That is, that is uh, I didn't even mean that's, that to that's rhyme. That's next week. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's yeah. coming up quick, guys. Yeah. So mark your calendars. You know, hey, I like it. Sooner the better, right? If it's two weeks in advance, people are like, oh, two weeks away. I don't have to worry about yeah. that. No, it's next week. Mark your calendars. Come out, and it starts at 9 o'clock. It's a free show because we're trying to uh, impress K Pasa. Like, hey, give us some time. And we're going to bring you guys some money, and we're all going to have a great time. So we're bringing uh, Greg G. Williams, who is a vet, went to Desert Storm for five years. But he is uh, now, uh, he, he takes care of premature infants at the hospital. And his humor is just so wholesome, and he's our headliner. And then we got Tony Lay, who just took fifth place in the San Francisco comedy competition. This is Robin Williams' territory. Robin Williams won that. Dana Carvey won that. And this wow. guy took fifth place last year. He, guys, this is a free show. It should take you. It should cost you 15 bucks at yeah. least. <laughs> but hey, come on down. And you know, K-Pos is great. We got three dollar uh, Mexican beers, four dollar fireball shots, ladies. <laughs> and uh, they're keeping up uh, the the uh, kitchen open for a little while. So get your quesadilla on. Oh no, yeah, definitely. So that's March 1st. That's next week. Next Thursday. Uh, next Thursday. And, and like you mentioned, I mean, it is. Uh, you know, we're in a society now where a week before is. 
is the best promotion because if you tell somebody too early, they forget about it. Yes, exactly. But just uh, search on your Facebook uh, Cartel Comedy Show at K, K Pasa, the Cartel Comedy Show, <laughs> and it's at the Hanford Mall. Dude, I, I, I it, it, it's a joke in itself, and I love it. It's well, you can kind of make a day out of it because it's payday. Yes. So you go shopping for your favorite outfit. Mm -hmm. You can probably change in the bathroom there and then go to the Kit Pasa, have dinner, and yeah. then watch the comedy show. Exactly. <laughs> and, and before the show, you can re-watch This Is Us. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Go from sad to glad. <laughs> but, yes, I, I was mentioning that uh, I'm glad that you're doing this because I Thank think you. we need more comedy. Uh, we need comedy shows like yours here in the Central Valley, here in uh, Hanford in general, because I like going to West Hollywood to the comedy store and, and, and watching comedy. I like being able just to walk in and, and watch a comedy show. Exactly. You should be able to do that here. Yes. I We're, mean, imagine if there was a comedy club here. You're not going to witness some famous uh, celebrity like Chappelle <laughs> come in, but you might see Glenn from the corner store like, Glenn, you do comedy? It's like, Yes. Besides, also you owe me for that two percent milk that I, the IOU milk fee. Come on, bro. Oh man! But is the goal uh, eventually to have a comedy club, or is it just uh, just weekly? Uh, maybe like a you know once once a week type of thing. We want to do uh, weekly shows uh, that close with open mics. So if anybody wants to get up and try comedy, we want to we we want to encourage that. Come on, this is a crazy area. People got crazy stories and craziness. Is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so w w right now we're doing, uh, w we're pushing for weekly. So the following week, w w we most likely will have another show. But we are uh, expanding to different avenues and trying to get big shows here, bring names that uh, people from uh, Comedy Central over. You know, me traveling all around California, I know the who I think are the best of the best in this state from the San Francisco to LA to the Central Coast. I've seen them all and there's so much talent in this state that needs to come to this area because this area is hungry for live entertainment. So you've made some contacts and you want to bring them here but you yes. gotta build it first. Yes I if do. You, if you build it they will come right? You should make a movie out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing Kevin Costner. And the business secondhand smoke? Yeah, that, that that was a joke, man. <laughs> I know. I'm just oh, okay. Kidding. okay. You, you, now you got me. Hey, I got you, man. You got to get up on that open mic, man. You just got me. All right. So uh, once again, Trent Babb, everybody. Uh, wh how do we get in touch with you on Facebook? On Facebook, I am at Trent-Babb-Comedy. And Babb is B-A-B-B. -B -B. <laughs> you know, we got it. So Trent-Babb-Comedy, reach me there. And uh, today we are putting up uh, the Cartel Comedy Show uh, over at K-Pasa. So search K-Pasa Cartel Comedy. All right, man. Well, you know what? I'd like to have you back before uh, the show, too. Maybe like the, the day before, the morning before. I would Maybe love Maybe the that. morning of. Oh, my gosh. Morning of. Let's do the morning of. Yeah, that Morning of. Great. Get Trent Babb back in here, folks. Uh, Eggs, Bacon, and Joey. Uh, we are here live a little after 9 o'clock this morning. Trent, thank you for joining us this thank morning, Thank you man. so much. March 1st. Que pasa in Hanford. Join us. Woo! <laughs>